Today we're getting started on a rebuild of a of a Jeep trailer, military model. This actually happens to be an M100 military trailer and as you see we've already gotten a pretty good start on tearing it apart. The bodies on these trailers are welded on. You can see all along the center cross bear we've already ground off the welds down the side of the frame there's spots where it's welded be welded where the body hangs down over the edge of the frame rail now in this particular trailer I've already had to cut out the rear cross member it was extensively rusted and bent so I'm going to have to replace that. You see that goes in the back of the trailer. These side rails are actually pretty thin. Without the body being welded on, there's not a whole lot to the frame itself. Now, the body, that's all that was left of the rear panel. Only about half of it a little less the floor rusted completely through so in reality there wasn't anything right here to save we've got some work to do on the front hitch as you see we're holding it up with a five gallon bucket so I've still got to go through that and see what's wrong in there there was a piece of pipe welded in here where the chains go I had to torch all that out of there and they were just using a pipe leg to keep the thing up in the air. I still have to take this all apart and see what's wrong with the drop the leg. The frame on the trailer, particularly the side rails, is really not made of very stiff material. You can see you can actually almost bend it. It does have a bend in here, which I'm going to have to take care of. As I mentioned, I had to cut the rear cross member out because it was bent and damaged. So the next step is going to be pulling the shock absorbers off stripping the tires and wheels and then I've got a little bit of work to figure out the hitch what parts are broken there and then we're going to take this frame down and uh, get it sandblasted and get prepared to paint it up and put a new body on it and we're going Start to go make there. some more progress I have gotten the pin to hook out this required serious heating of the nut with the torch and I ended up also having to heat the casting here because even with the nut and spring off the pin hook was still stuck in its tapered hole casting. Now the next problem is going to be the leg. In this area here the leg pin was in the center of this and the leg pin has a handle on it the leg pin would be right in here and it should come out and have a handle on it in behind here should be a spring which is probably rusted and collapsed by now and that pin so this is broken off I've ground this flush I've heated this once and tried to drive this out so far you know no luck so I'm gonna to have to continue heating the casting trying to drive this out I'm going to go ahead and pull the bolt from the from the pivot for the leg support see the support legs broken off here and the pivot part of it is still in here this point here so I'll probably heat this bolt up get this out of here and see if I can get this loose but here's the one hole for the up position that this pin that's frozen in place is through now the other the current pin is in a down position where it was broken off so I might have to wiggle this back and forth a bit to get clearance to drive this out so I'm gonna have to spend some time heating and and uh, and removing bolts and pounding with a hammer and punching and trying to get this assembly apart but uh, we'll get it and we'll come back to the project once we got that free at this point I managed to get the the broken leg casting free from its pin I uh, ended up having to 
ended up having to torch the uh, nut loose ended up having to grind the end of the pin down ended up having to use the use the air gun to run it back and forth a bunch of times to get it loose finally drive it out of its hole finally got it out actually almost an hour's worth of work just to get that thing loose so next we're going to attack getting this this leg lock pin up obviously we're loose on that however there's an issue on the other side in the pinhole here there's a set screw come up through here to keep this from coming out of there by accident uh, once the handle was bent it really can't come out anyway so this really doesn't have much function normally but it's all rusted in place now and it's blocking our progress so at this point I'm gonna have to drill or grind and get that out of there and once I've got that out then I'm gonna try and heat and drive that pin out of there and I'll free up this piece completely then we'll look into putting new parts back in there and getting this functioning using my little die grinder with a triangular burr on it I got the lock pin out of the casting with that much trouble this is a tool that we use quite often whenever working on repro bodies or any kind of old car stuff it never fails you gotta gotta slot a hole or get a hole lined up a little better so we got that straightened out there without much trouble the the pin we ended up having to spend quite a bit of time heating up the casting I had to heat that casting cherry red three times and drive and pound until finally we could get that broken pin out of the casting so now what we got is we got our we got our casting piece out that was broke off we got our broken pin and spring out finally and then next to it we got our new pin and spring we got our new cast piece and we have our leg which was missing all together so now with the with the p-shaped leg the new casting the new pin some hardware we're going to try to put this uh, leg back together see if we can get this thing working properly now as often the case with reproduction parts we had a couple little issues here this is the rough casting and this thickness of the casting you see here varied a little bit and what was happening was this area where I ground it down was getting pinched and, a, and the leg was not turning smoothly so I ground this down with the grinder on both sides so it's, so it's now smooth and it, and it pivots nicely then we also had a minor issue where the pin the pin didn't exactly go through some of the holes and what you'll see here is I put it in the in the trailer and then I took I took a uh, can of spray paint and sprayed inside the hole you'll see I got just a little ghost image of black paint around that hole so that hole was just about maybe a 30 second out of alignment there so I'll take my little grinder and I'll, I'll oblong that hole a little bit bigger get that to fit nice before I bolt this all up I'll get them in this one up here I sprayed that one you'll see that's even better yet so there's a little bit of an issue there not unusual on reproduction parts but we'll fix that up right quick with the grinder okay, and get it here all is our uh, trailer leg release pin this is a reproduction part also a USA made part but like a lot of other reproduction parts we did a little modifying to it we ground a bit of a taper out here in the end so it goes in easier I also ground a little bit of a chamfer on the back edge so that it pulls back easier test fitting it revealed that I that I uh, wanted a little less spring I cut two of the uh, two of the rings off of the spring so I test fit it and got it the way I want it at this point I've got two marks here indicating where I want to try to heat it and bend it so that it has the L-shaped handle that everybody's familiar with the goal is that the leg is to be supported on the heavy end of the pin you don't want the leg being supported on the short end of the pin where it might bend it or not hold it firmly so I positioned it in the casting saw where this just comes through the casting made a mark saw where the other end just comes through the casting made a mark now I'm going to do a little painting on this then I'm going to grease it and I'm going to put it in there in the casting I'll heat it up where, I, where my marks are bend it in the L shape and we'll have a plunger assembly back working
This is a quick picture of our leg pin to drop the leg. I know most customers get a little confused when they send them apart to straight, but after you've installed it properly and heated it, bent it over, that's what it looks like. That's what everybody's used to seeing. All right, we now have all the components working. We got a functioning leg that comes up and down. We got a lunette line that's now loose and spins around. So we got the body off of it. We got the shocks off of it. Our rear cross mirror won't be ready for two weeks or so from the fabrication shop. So we're ready to take this thing down to sandblast and get the thing blasted and painted. Then we'll put the rear cross member in and go back to the, putting the body on.